Guys, Father's Day is coming up. And if you're looking for the perfect gift to give your dad, look no further. Help him step up his pocket game. The Ridge Wallet, guys, it's light, it's sleek, it's industrial. And by the way, it doesn't fold and awkwardly bulge out of your back pocket. It goes into your front pocket. Ridge Wallets hold up to 12 cards, plus all the cash that you need. You can choose from over 30 colors and styles. That includes carbon fiber and burnt titanium. It is the best wallet you can buy. You don't just have to take my word for it. There's over 40,000 five-star reviews. And I'll admit, I was skeptical at first. But once I tried it, I never went back to my old wallet. I'm sure you're going to love it, but guys, there's no pressure. Test it out for 45 days. If you don't love it, and I mean love it, send it back, you'll get a full refund. If you decide to keep it, and I believe you will, there's a lifetime warranty, so there's nothing to lose. Just go to ridge.com slash jail or click on the link in the description below. That's going to get you a special 15% savings for Father's Day. That comes with free worldwide shipping and returns. Let's be real fair around here, okay? I will never speak the way that I have spoken about Charles Oliveira again. It's the best I can do for you. Best I can do for you. I was wrong. I did not know he was that good. I had reason to believe that he wasn't that good. Charles Oliveira has tapped out eight times. He says that submissions are his best thing. He's tapped out eight times. He's missed weight numerous times. He lost a world championship on the scale in Arizona and didn't know enough about the sport to fight that, of which would have been a hell of a fight, and he likely would have got the belt back. I mean, I'm just sharing for you. There's reasons for me to be critical of Oliveira. Now, he apparently has an incredible power. I did not know about his power watching his fights. I didn't know about his power Saturday watching Benny. I learned about his power through John Anik, who quoted Justin Gaethje, who bragged about the power of Charles Oliveira. That's interesting to me. That is a really interesting tidbit. I love to hear from opponents. I worked out with St. Pierre a couple of times. I was stunned by the strength of George St. Pierre. It was deceptive and it was surprising. And I remember it. And even moreover, is I was so surprised after I felt that strength that his past opponents, Koscheck, Hughes, BJ, weren't talking about how strong he was. I mean, it, it was like a superpower. And I, I only bring that to you because the way that guys will talk about, it's a big deal. They don't like to be complimentary. Eddie Alvarez is so complimentary of Conor McGregor, and that surprises me. Eddie did not like Conor. He didn't like him going into that fight. He didn't like him now. But he's honest about what he felt. He's honest about the southpaw. He's honest about the power. He's honest about the setups. He's honest about the speed. And that stuff matters. It goes a long way. Charles Oliveira says he wants to rematch Islam. He says that that wasn't him. I did not believe those things. Sure looked like him. He's now saying, I will go to Abu Dhabi. I will go to Islam's backyard. Now, when you're of that mindset, the only thing that you're succeeding at doing is convincing the smart marks like Chael that, hey, you really do want to do this rematch. You really do feel there is something different. You feel that you are holding a secret, a secret about that night. And you can come out and straighten it to the world. I didn't trust the sincerity of Charles Oliveira. Look, guys, by the way, I'm explaining right now why I've been hard on Charles. I'm not going to do it anymore. I am not. It's rude. It's rude, right? I mean, there's a game here and there's sportsmanship to the game. He won. And he won in a very decisive fashion. Not to mention he had to deal with adversity. While I tell you that Charles won that fight, Charles was losing that fight. Oh, and by the way, he lost more aspects of the fight than he won. Before you think I'm putting him down for that, I'm not. That's adversity. To come back when you're losing. It doesn't matter if you're losing for 10 seconds, guys. Or in his case, several minutes. If you can come back from that, you get credit. 
Who out-wrestled who? Not even a question. Benny. Whose groundwork looked more festive? Not even a question. Benny. So I, I'm just sharing with you, those are insults to Charles. Charles had to overcome that. He's losing the wrestling battle. He's losing the range battle. He's losing the pressure battle, but he found a way. He found a way to win quickly and within a round that wasn't going his way. That's a really good job. And he says that he wants to go and he's willing to fight Islam anywhere. He's going to come to Abu Dhabi. Now, th this is a very different song that he's singing. And we see guys do this as soon as they're not the champion, right? It's the problem with that bell. It's the problem with who you give an opportunity to become your champion and what you're going to have to deal with. Another guy that I don't speak fondly of, but it's not fair. It's not fair. And I, I, it's not fair is Leon. I give Leon a hard time and I shouldn't. Leon is awesome. But I'm going to use him as an example because it's the most recent one. Leon will do anything for an opportunity. We as a community got together and we band together and fought for him to be given an opportunity that we thought he should have already had. We did everything we could to make sure that he wasn't overlooked and we won. And when he wins the belt, I'm not talking about the head kick one I heard around the world. I'm talking about solidified. I'm talking about the last fight, the third fight with Kamar Usman. When he goes out there and wins, it wasn't the 10th thing we asked him to do that was too much. It wasn't the 30th thing that we asked him to do where we finally got some resistance. It was the very first thing we asked him to do. All of these that we as a community fought like hell to make sure he wasn't overlooked. He wins the championship. He's asked to fight Covington. He says no. I know those things will work themselves out. I'm not looking to give Leon a hard time. I'm looking to use Leon to prove a point because here we have Oliveira saying, I will come to your backyard. But before their last fight, I'm talking about Oliveira versus Islam. Oliveira raised a great big stink about having you go to Abu Dhabi. He said that Abu Dhabi is the backyard, that it is not fair, that the judges will not be, that the crowd in the venue is not... Fill in the blank. He said all of these things. And you know, that's a stretch. That's a stretch, but he meant that's a stretch. Abu Dhabi and Fight Island, a isolated bubble that thank God in heaven above they were able to find when the rest of the world decided to shut down. I mean, in all fairness, is the backyard to a guy who lives in Dagestan, Russia, and trains out of so Jose, San Jose, California. What map are you looking at to come to that conclusion? But he still did. And I, I only bring that to you. He was the chip and he was in the driver's side. He's getting participation. They had just potentially screwed up in Arizona. We'll never know. We'll never know because he didn't fight it. But what a difference a day makes, right? What a difference taking a belt off somebody. What a difference when a guy is hungry and wants something. He wants other people to share when he's hungry. But when he's full and those other people are trying to make it, he's telling them you should have found a way. You should figure it out on your own like I did. I'm just sharing with you. It, it's a different attitude. But with a different attitude, you can have different performances, which can lead to different outcomes. I feel as though we're seeing a different Charles Oliver here. Is that enough to sway a very one-sided ass whipping that he took? Probably not. But is it enough to sell to the audience who apparently already likes him? I mean, not for nothing, the great journalist Ariel Helwani, you want to know what his take of this fight was? It's about over the weekend, Darush and Oliver. Do you want to know what Ariel's takeaway was? It wasn't the comeback, it wasn't the right hand, it wasn't the finish, it wasn't stopping a guy who'd Won his last eight in a row. It wasn't any of those things. Errol Hawani's takeaway is how stunned he was at how the crowd in Canada treated Charles as their own. And he's right. From the guys with the contacts to the guys in the cheap seats, they were going crazy for Charles. I couldn't believe it. And then he hit him with that goofy line. Lightweight has a champion. His name's Charles Oliveira. They went crazy. You put that on a bumper, on a t-shirt, you put that on a bumper stick. I can't believe that slogan. Believe me, if I thought there was any legs to that slogan, I would have put it on a t-shirt. I had no idea. People love it, and they love him. And as far as my time of pulling him back, discounting him, 
making decisions on speculative rumors, they're done. Charles Oliveira won, fair and square. 